Since the beginning, fighting games and martial arts have been linked to each other. We talked about this in our video about the history of fighting games, but some of the earliest games in the genre were entirely focused on presenting you with real-world martial arts like karate or boxing. Things would get more wild shortly after, with some entirely fictional styles and crazy special moves becoming a common element of almost every single fighting game. However, real-world inspirations can still be found all around, even distinctly over-the-top games like Guilty Gear and Melty Blood have a touch of real martial arts in them, not due to any lack of imagination, but simply because they're so cool. 3D fighters have always stood out in this regard more than others. While there are still games and characters that have some fantastical elements, series like Virtua Fighter, Dead or Alive, and Tekken maintain some of the most faithful depictions of martial arts, rivaled only by sports-centered titles like Fight Night or UFC Undisputed. It's safe to say that it's also one of the selling points for these games, as we see developers consistently deliver top-notch animations and hire experienced martial artists to get the best possible data from motion capture. Because of this, we want to go over some of the most distinctive fighters on the Tekken roster and take a closer look at their fighting styles. I'm your host, Arya from That Blasted Salami. Let's get into this. If you point at any random fighting game, there's always a decent chance that it'll contain a character that directly references Bruce Lee, at least to some extent. Whether it's his battle cries, movements, appearance, or the remarkable proficiency with nunchucks, which inspired so many failed imitations. Martial Law is one of such characters, and one of Tekken's mainstays, appearing in every single major title outside of the original Tekken Tag Tournament and Tekken 3, where he was briefly replaced by his son, Forest Law. In almost every aspect, both laws are amongst the most accurate depictions of Bruce Lee you'll find in a fighting game. The voice, outfits, and animations are all incredibly obvious references to Bruce Lee's classic action masterpieces. But what about the actual fighting style? This is where things get rather interesting. If you try to look up martial law's fighting style, it all comes down to Jeet Kune Do. And indeed, Bruce Lee was the founder, and by extension, the most recognized practitioner of Jeet Kune Do. And yet, to call it a fighting style would be a bit of a misconception. Bruce Lee was frustrated with the secretive and rigid state of Chinese martial arts, where the different schools were more interested in maintaining old traditions instead of modifying and improving their teachings. This idea was also the complete opposite of what he was taught by the legendary Yip Man, who encouraged his students to change and adapt their style instead of following a set path. Jeet Kune Do was formed as a direct response and served more as a philosophy rather than a martial art of its own. True to his word, Jeet Kune Do was fluid and shapeless, like water. Its core principles were about borrowing from many different styles while discarding anything that doesn't work. It's a complete rejection of systems and rules in favor of practicality and freedom of expression. This philosophy was a major catalyst in popularizing mixed martial arts, but after Bruce Lee's untimely death, Jeet Kune Do itself was left without much direction or vision. Because of this, modern JKD is often divided into two directions, one which teaches people how to fight like Bruce Lee, and one that essentially serves as an MMA school that teaches the strongest elements of different martial arts in combination with Lee's philosophy. Going back to law, we can see that in his case, Jeet Kune Do is meant to be a depiction of Bruce Lee himself, first and foremost. It might not be representative of how Lee himself would approach a real fight, but it is a great tribute that includes everything he was known for, from the iconic one-inch punch and sharp kicks to some of the more obscure references. And it all comes together into a nimble, well-rounded, and technical character that rewards players who put in time and effort to learn him, which feels rather appropriate for Bruce Lee. 
In Tekken 2, we saw the addition of Lei Wulong, the super cop from China with a laid-back attitude and penchant for traditional martial arts. He's not quite a dead ringer like Law, but it's fairly easy to see that Lei was entirely based on Jackie Chan. More specifically, his identity is based on Jackie's character in Police Story, while a significant portion of his moves are taken from Drunken Master, Spiritual Kung Fu, and several other movies. While Kung Fu could serve as an umbrella term for all that Lei does, there is quite a bit of nuance to his styles and the term itself. These days, especially outside of China, Kung Fu is typically used to describe a variety of martial arts, but its original meaning is much broader and can mean a variety of things that require hard work and dedication. Even among martial arts, there exists a distinction between internal and external styles. Internal styles like Tai Chi are closer to fitness and medical exercises in function, as they focus on meditative routines and maintaining good physical health. External styles are the exact opposite, with a focus on power, building strength, and applying teachings in combat or competition. Since Lei actively uses different animal styles in combat, they could be described as external. However, in real life, these styles are more likely to be internal, with a focus on cultivating different physical aspects that are bound to be useful for martial artists. The flowing movement of the dragon. The tiger's powerful strikes. The panther's swift movement. The crane's balance. And the snake's precision. The other prominent style is, of course, drunken boxing. Little is known about its origins, and just like with other styles of kung fu, it can vary wildly depending on the region or specific branch. However, the core of this style always revolves around the same concept of imitating a drunk person. In theory, this is meant to make the fighter unpredictable and evasive through a combination of swaying movement and unusual stances. In reality, though, you'll probably never see this style work outside of games and movies. Within Tekken, it's amazing how well these styles combine into one tricky but coherent character who does a fantastic job of representing the man he's based on. Out of the entire roster, Lei offers perhaps the highest freedom of expression. If you wish, you can always play him in a very straightforward and fundamental way, but his numerous attacks and transitions also allow for the cool choreography or clowning that you'd expect in a Jackie Chan fight scene. Our last character is the formidable Feng Wei, the ultimate master of Chinese martial arts who seeks to become the strongest in the world. In stark contrast to Lei, his entire character is built around overwhelming power and explosive movement. Yet, true to his martial art, it also incorporates some evasion and tricky approaches. It's not as easy to confirm as Law or Lei, but Feng seems to have two major influences behind him. His design could be inspired by Retsu, a Kempo practitioner from Grappler Baki, while his overall style feels heavily influenced by the greatest Jet Li movies, like Once Upon a Time in China. Specifically, Jet Li's depiction of the legendary Wong Fei Hung, a Chinese folk hero that was purported to be an especially skilled Hung Ga practitioner. This style is a part of the Southern Shaolin Kung Fu family, and it's a great showcase of both external and internal techniques, which comes down to a balance between sheer physical force and fluid execution of precise routines, like the 12 Bridges exercise, part of which can be seen during Feng's win animation. On his arms, you can also see the iconic training rings that are occasionally used by Hung Ga practitioners. Same as with many other Kung Fu styles, without some amount of cross-training, it doesn't see much use for self-defense or combat sports, but the captivating routines and intricate stances have made their way into many Chinese martial arts movies and other forms of media. For example, outside of the aforementioned wuxia movies, Punga was also creatively used in Avatar The Last Airbender, 
where its firm stances and vigorous strikes gave earthbending magic a sense of weight and power. If you've played as or against Feng, you already know that the games do a great job of faithfully conveying all the different aspects of Hung Ga through his gameplay. Feng always comes off as an absolute monster, who can smother you with pressure while using the Kempo Step and Snake Dash to move around with incredible evasion. His animations similarly combine smooth, flowing combinations alongside sharp linear strikes that carry a lot of force. He might be a menace in Tekken 7, but we have to admit that he's one of the coolest characters in the series. And that wraps up our video about the martial arts that can be found in Tekken. The selection of fighters in this episode ended up being quite thematic, with all of our heroes being based on some of the biggest action movie stars and representing a wide variety of Chinese martial arts. Yet, there's still a lot more out there, from boxing to wrestling or largely fictional styles like ninjutsu. If there are any specific characters or styles you'd like to see in future videos like this, please let us know in the comments below. This has been Aria from TBS, wishing you an excellent day.